automatic in this motherfucker. Now, usually, I would be sitting over there and doing this review. But, I'm in one of my moves today, in which I don't feel like sitting down. Where the fuck is this mic located at? It's kind of far-ish, which is a little disappointing. So I think I will put it about here. Hopefully that's close enough. Welcome to my review of Cultic 9, episode 10 review, which ironically enough is another decent episode because of pacing and actual character moments. Um, which is, I think, has been the problem that's plagued this entire anime. Is that the anime hasn't really let the characters shine in the way that they're supposed to. Um, so we first find out that Ryoko or Ryotas is the long distant relative of, of uh, Nikola Tesla and is a part of the Narusawa family, which ironically enough owns the hospitals that were used to find out who was Scandinavian positive. And which is where the list of 256 people probably came from. They probably use Ryoko's, which means Ryoko's family at least is involved with this. They were the hot day because they own the hospital that they use to get the list of people that they were going to use for their fucking experiments. We also apparently have someone who can, uh, they've already been sending out a person or people. We only see one person in this episode, but people who can come out and kill them. Like, come out and kill the, the ghosts. Well, they're ghosts. Which means all the people, the 256 people, there's now people running around killing them. We also find out that the gun that Riotas has been using as a joke this entire time actually is plot important, which a lot of people kind of suspected because they weren't explaining the joke, but they weren't explaining the gun either. We find out that the gun is a way of keeping... You could technically use the gun. The gun is pretty much like a less effective version of of the Scandinavian stuff. It, it pretty much it cr makes people immortal. And if you notice, Ryotas, even though has been joking around and shooting Gamon, what he's really been doing is extending, I wouldn't say extending his life as much so, pretty much, I, I guess it's kind of hard because the way they explain the gun is hard. We also find out that the key that they're talking about is the key to the key that the company has. The key... We also find out that Ryotas is being possessed. I, it's hard to tell. It seems like Ryotas is being possessed by the original, by the actual daughter, Nikola Tesla's daughter, Aveline. Aveline is technically her great, great, like her way back relative. So, but she, when she died, she never really died, died. So she just possessed them. And they kind of explain, again, because they kind of go through the process of explaining, it's like, oh, look. And just because you think I'm dead doesn't necessarily mean I'm dead. Like, like the whole, well, I was able to reach out to you and go through the, the radio signals and possess my great, 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 great granddaughter because of electro electromagnetic waves. Because that shit's everywhere. Which is how most of the human, it's pretty much, they're pretty much boiling down the soul to like elect electromagnetic waves, how the brain functions, how your body functions. And that's the reason why technically ghosts can still exist um so that's the they, that's their explanation of how Aveline is able to do what she can do although it doesn't explain why she well, i guess because if she's the daughter of nikola tesla she would have picked up a lot of that stuff from tesla considering tesla's theory is what it originally where all this shit was based on um sarai's dad shit was based on so as of right now we know riotas is riotas Aveline is possessing Riotas as a way to kind of communicate. So, Riotas is probably really herself. It's not like Riotas isn't herself. It's just that Riotas is also being possessed by her great 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 grandma. And for some reason, Gamon holds a special ability, which we already knew. It's probably now we probably know that the gun might affect the reason why Aveline, because the gun it seems to be explained as a way of actually making their bodies physical again. Supposedly, I may have that wrong. Someone please correct me in the comments. But it seems like I'm under the impression that the gun allows them to become more physical. Like maybe possibly regain some sense of their bodies back in some way. 
I might be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wait, and plus, it seems like the gun is the only reason why Asuhina was able to see him. Because remember, Asuhina can't see anybody else who's the, in that metaphysical ghost state. But she could see Gamon. And p I used to think that was because of the plot important. He's the main character special thing, which still might be a part of it. But he is also probably because Ryotas has been shooting him with the gun multiple times. I think at this time he shot her, him at least three three times, including this episode. That might be part of it. Uh, I do like that they, they do this, that Dura thing where you have some characters doing shit in the background and you have other shit doing their characters. We also get hints that Kiryu is technically Rius's brother. Like, actually, it's his brother. And it wasn't that he... Because they never really explained how he died. But they were just like, oh, well, his corpse has been flying around. Now, I can't tell if Kiryu is actually Rius's brother or if he's able to access his memories. I can't tell which it is. Might be a combination of both. Not totally sure. And then at the very end of the episode, we get, oh, Rurika's dead, but her corpse is missing. Well, huh. Why is Rurika's corpse missing? Also, where does this character fit into it? Because really, at this point in time, considering they've been pointing out how all these characters are important, Rurika's the only one that really hasn't been done, hasn't really done anything. The only thing they, they've really said that she's done, she wrote a dungeon, a dojin that predicts the future, and she helped the boy steal, uh, was it, steal, what was it, Chichan's, uh, Koribakto box, or something off of, off, something off of Miyu's, um, uh, something off of Miyu's corpse, I forget which. Um... Which actually goes back into the reason why I kind of like this episode. This episode is one of the few instances of, the, of them actually showing the main cast having casual interactions. Where, like, Sarai still doesn't believe in the cult shit even though he's dead. And so a lot of his and Sumikaze's conversations is like, you're just being fucking stubborn at this point. You you know you're dead, you just don't want to accept that you're dead. He's very logic-based, even being busted out by Miyu way back in the earlier episodes. Talking about how he needs to talk to his father before his father died. And then his father died before he got a chance to talk to him. Uh, Sarai's in this whole logic. If it ain't got logic in it, don't bring it up to me. You can also see this episode that Gamon does legitimately feel bad about how he didn't go to help Miyu. Although it's not like Sumikaze or Sarai really did anything. It's just that you, you can see there's some sense of remorse there. They don't. We still don't know what, what makes Gamon so special. Now granted... If your father was a part of this cult that he may or may not have intentionally created and you were surrounded by radio waves all the goddamn time because you went to go see your father every time he was at the radio station, it's possible that your radio waves might be stronger than anybody else's because of the overabundance. Although the argument could then be made, why wasn't your dad the same way? I don't know. There's more to that than we know. It also seems kind of crazy. Then now the plot is turned into... We got two episodes left, by the way. Apparently, Occult, Occultic Nine is only going to have 12 episodes. We got two episodes left, and we've now introduced a guy running around killing metaphysical bodies. Meaning, the next episode is pretty much just going to be kind of explaining the final plot shit. And the 12th episode is, per, is the climax, which I don't know what that's supposed to do because we don't... Like, how do you get your bodies back? They don't under... They have all the pieces, and they're starting to piece it together... Which means by the 11th episode, we'll have a fuller understanding. But you still have Rurika hanging in the background. And Rurika hanging in the background, and we only got two episodes left, tells me that some bullshit's about to go down. And she's going to be the major wrench in every fucking thing. Because Rurika's character's been all over the place. It just seems like too much shit. And then from what I've been hearing, uh, and then as I've learned more about the series, like how the first episode is literally an entire volume of the manga... Of the, of the light novel because A1 Pictures doesn't understand what pacing is. This ep I feel like the ending for this is going to be some bullshit. It's either going to be a cliffhanger ending, which I honestly would prefer over what I think they're going to do is just make up a bullshit ending. Especially because they started kind of getting their footing down a little bit and now... Because the footing for the show was alright. It's just that it keeps fluctuating between unnecessarily quick and ridiculously fucking slow. So I'm kind of like, well, I don't... What, what are you going to do? Show? Are you going to fucking flip out on me again I hope not but you know but in terms of the overall plot good shit so far
I feel like the show probably at this point can't escape anything but being like a seven out of ten. I feel like the way it's been produced, it can only be like a seven out of ten. Which is a shame because I think there's a lot of good shit in here. But A one pictures can't be trusted apparently. So What are you going to do? Fucking deal with it, I guess. So, that was my review for episode 10 of Occultic 9. Please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Schizominic. Um, watch the game. Hey, the whim. And I will catch you all later. <laughs>